All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Liu, and I'm really excited today to be presenting our work, Integrating Living Organisms and Devices to Implement Care-Based Interactions. Uh, to repeat what Eric said, this work was done in collaboration with Pedro Lopez at the University of Chicago. So in this work, we explore how embedding a living organism as a functional component of a device changes the user-device relationship. Okay, we explore this by creating the smartwatch you see here that clearly it's not a normal smartwatch. Uh, our design incorporates the act of caring for it in its interaction. The organism here acts as a living wire and you can see it growing across here. Once grown, the organism forms an electrical wire that enables a heart rate sensor. And when connected, it completes the circuit, powering the sensor and enabling the user to see their heart rate. However, this living wire only works when the organism is healthy. In our concept, the user needs to actively care for the living wire in order for the device to work. Here you can see the user providing water as a form of care. So why would we build a device like this that has so much friction and requires the user to actively care for it in order for it to work? Well, in HC HCI, we design all these innovative interactive devices that are increasingly necessary and integrated into our lives. But despite the large role that they play in your life, have you ever wondered whether you are actually a good caretaker of your devices? I would argue that for the most part, we are not great caretakers of our devices. Once their utility runs out or a newer model gets released, most of our devices become el electronic waste and landfills without much of a second thought. In fact, e-waste is the largest growing waste stream in the world. Our work is motivated by exploring how we can reimagine this user device relationship by engineering our devices differently. Similarly, across various HCI projects, researchers have also imagined alternative relationships by creating devices that encourage non-normative engagements and moments of re reflection. Researchers have also specifically explored how to embed care into our interactions with these devices through a variety of methods. Oftentimes, designs involve forms of virtual care where users care for digital entities like pets or plants. A really great example of this is the Tamagotchi, a toy that asks the user to care for a virtual pet. Interactions based on virtual care work by simulating liveliness to keep the users engaged. However, there is a limit to the attachment form between user and this virtual companion. The Tamagotchi device is ultimately made up of inert materials like metals and plastics. And after the, the novelty of the device wears off, it can be hard to feel a connection to such a device. And for a lot of young kids, even if they loved and cared for this toy at one point, they ultimately lost connection and threw them out. So this makes living media interfaces a really interesting area to explore. In these past projects, researchers have looked at what happens when we don't only use inert materials, but instead work with responsive and living organisms. So we're inspired by these past approaches to specifically explore the use of living material to design for caring interactions. So we present our concept of impl implementing physical care in interactive devices by integrating a living organism. To explain our concept, we use the example of our slime mold integrated smartwatch. But our concept can be realized across various device, organism, and user configurations. To better illustrate this, we present three key principles needed for our concept to work. Principle one, interactive device features a living organism. Our concept relies on the really unique qualities evoked from interaction with a living organism. For one, plastics and metals are not responsive like living organisms, making it difficult to feel kinship with devices made only of such materials. Whether plants, fungi, bacteria, animals, slime mold, or even humans, we all need the right nutrition and environmental conditions to thrive, and this is something that connects us all. And working with living organisms also has quite literally life or death stakes because of these needs. And these are all really unique material qualities that interaction designers can incorporate in partnering with them and highlighting them in their device. 
principle two, the user is responsible for delivering care. So our concept puts the user in charge of the act of care. We do this to avoid the sort of virtual care relationship where delivering care is a frictionless automated ex experience like via a push of a button. In requiring the user to perform care, the user also becomes an active and essential part in this relationship between user device and living organism. Last, principle three, the organism participates in the functionality of the device. To further encourage care, the organism must contribute to some aspect of the interactive device's functionality, and this contribution should be as explicit as possible. If the user immediately recognizes the impact of the organism's health, they can understand the impact of the care that they deliver, offering more potential to deepen this user device relationship. So these three principles enable the formation of a caring interactions network where all three entities can benefit from the provided care. So now I'll dive deeper into how we implemented this concept. So the living organism we partnered with is Physarum polycephalum, also known as slime mold. So slime mold has a lot of really unique features that make it especially great for designing caring interactions with. It's an organism found in many wet foresty areas, but it's also commonly found in many middle school or high school lab project kits. It's also biosafety level one, so presents little to no danger when handling it. And as you can see in these pictures, slime mold can grow really expansively and in many different environments. For our purposes, we put slime mold in a small acrylic enclosure designed to encourage the formation of a living wire. Here's a time lapse of it growing across it towards the soaked oats in the second well. As you can see, eventually without enough moisture, the slime mold dries out, entering a dormant state. Slime mold can exist in the dormant state for years, waiting to be resuscitated again when environmental conditions become a little bit more favorable. So let me show you how we use this in our interaction design. Back in our video, I showed you how when the slime mold is fully grown across, healthy, and connected to the smartwatch, it acts as a living wire conducting electricity to power the heart rate sensor. However, if the user doesn't care for the device and neglects it, over time, the organism will dry without any water to sustain it. And without the necessary conditions to thrive, the slime mold will enter a dormant dried state. And when it does so, the organism is no longer conductive or connected, uh, disabling the sensor. However, the user can then revive the organism by providing care and over time allowing the slime mold to grow the wire again. So we leverage this extremely unique feature of the slime mold's life cycle to design inter interactions that depend on the user's care and subsequently the slime mold's health. This works because in our watch, the organism directly participates in the device functionality. This is the sch schematic of our whole system, and in yellow you can see how the physarum acts as a living wire connecting the circuit. We also conducted several tests as a technical evaluation of the slime mold living wire. We explored growing our slime mold with different types of nutrition and on different substrates, testing the influence of direct light on its growth, taking time lapses of the slime mold's growth to determine average speed of growth, and last, measuring the average resistance of the physarum wire over time. Now, there are many, many limitations of using a living wire, and in many ways, this living wire can't compete with the reliability of a standard copper trace. These tests were done to give better insight into practically how a slime mold wire could be used, but we were more specifically interested in the unique properties of working with it as a living material. So to go back, our original purpose of doing this whole project was to see if our approach could change the user device relationship. So we wanted to actually give out this new living wearable device and see what folks thought. So we had participants take the device home and wear this device for nine to 14 days in their daily life. Our study consisted of two phases. First, in the caring phase, we instructed participants to care for the physarum until it grew a wire and they could experience a healthy physarum and heart rate enabled device. Then we instructed participants to not care for the physarum until it was dried and the heart rate sensor was no longer enabled. 
So in the study, we had really, really interesting responses from our participants throughout the study. I selected some quotes to read to you to give you an idea of what it was like, but I highly encourage you to read the paper for some more juicy responses. So during the caring phase, participant five actually got sick during her study, but continued to actively take care of her slime during her sickness. In her interview, she explains how the care that she gave to the slime mold was the same as the care that her partner and her were giving to herself, specifically feeding herself oats and drinking a lot of water. During the neglect phase, where participants had to not provide care and wait for the physarum to dry out, participant four explained how during the growing phase, she checked up on the watch more, but after not having to care for it, she treated the watch more like an object. When comparing her experiences with a regular smartwatch, participant one explained how the Fiserum watch didn't feel like a one-way relationship as she was taking care of it, and the watch was giving her heart rate as payback. This felt more like a bi-directional relationship. And last, in comparing the care that she gave to her other electronic devices compared to her Fiserum watch, Participant two explained how she felt more immediately connected to her Fiserum watch because of the living component, uh, feeling connected even on the first day, whereas with other devices, she felt like it takes years. Overall, we found three main themes across our participants' experiences. We found that they developed a sense of responsibility for the watch, an affinity to the organism, and a reciprocal relationship, and also experienced effective responses depending on the device's state. So to conclude, uh, as the number of consumer devices grows exponentially, the toll on our environment becomes more pronounced. We primarily engage only as users of our devices, a relationship that only works one way. We see our approach as a method to encourage users to reckon with this aspect of their device use and to explore future possibilities where our designs encourage more than just a user device relationship built on extractive use, but interactions where users can take on a caretaking role. So the care that we extend to our devices is clearly different from the care that we extend to our other non-human counterparts like our plants or pets. Could the future of interactive devices also provide enriching experiences that center care for the other? We hope that our work can allow others to imagine these new care-based futures, foster debate, and also inspire novel perspectives on this idea. To end, I'd like to very quickly give a special shout out to the Slime World Collective for supplying a Slime World and invaluable knowledge about working with Slime World. Um, we'd actually like to pass the torch by sharing project details at this link. Um, and if you come to our demo that's happening in a bit, you might be able to get your hands on a little Slime World growing kit. Uh, so please come. Um, and that's all. Thank you so much for listening to this presentation. Feel free to ask questions. Hi guys, I'm Mesha Toth. I'm Vivian from Carnegie Mellon University. Um, I have like a purely speculative question, but I'm wondering how you feel, so this relationship seems pretty simple to me, like you water and you feed it a little bit and it's good. Um, at what point do you think you would find it too laborious for it to be a two-way street and would you want to kind of stop caring? And this is, you know, just opinion and speculation. Yeah, I mean, um, like I, with all, so, sorry. Uh, again, like this whole project is about creating a friction full experience where you have to enact care for the device. I can imagine like our relationship with a lot of other devices. Um, at some point, there are times where we no longer feel like they're useful and want them in our lives. We actually, in our study, uh, we asked participants a question about what would you do if you decided that you no longer wanted this device in your life? Um, and a lot of participants actually felt conflicted about this. Um, some participants said that like, they felt like they had to rehome it like they would a pet, for example, because of the living element. And some people were like, I don't feel like I could just trash it like a normal device or like keep it in the closet because of this living component. So I think there's some tension there where 
uh, even if you're tired of taking care of it, you feel like you have responsibility over the slime mold and its health. Hope that answers your question. Um, this is Jimmy also from CMU. <laughs> so you make me wonder whether, you know, like cleaning my lenses or charging my phone also is kind of a hair. Um, but the question is also kind of speculative. Um, I'm sure you look into how to leverage the living material itself to do sensing. So for example, with some genetic modifications, mm. you, could, you could have it to sense um, sweat or physiological. So, so I wonder if that feels an even smoother sort of closed loop curve because then you can really take care of the organism that does the actual work versus having electronic maybe, you know, Yes, absolutely. I would love to see that future. <laughs> um, I, I, I do also want to mention something that um, you brought up, which is like care for our devices can take many forms. And we also like brought that up as a question to participants. So read our paper for more. But yes, I would love to see a future where um, the organisms we work with can be much more intimate to, to us and that we can have more of a symbiotic relationship to them. Um, I'm very inspired by the idea of a holobiont, which the idea in biology is the fact that within us, our guts and stuff, um, we are kind of climates for a lot of other organisms, bacteria and stuff to, to thrive. Um, so I feel like there are a lot of pathways that we could take with this relationship, and I'm super excited about the future of what we could do. Great to go.